But I'm going to leave you all because I want you to do this right. without me. What was the one minute you were supposed to say? Um, I heard, that, you, did you yeah, have I'll something? Give you, I'll give you my speech. Okay. All right. Manushka, can you hear me as well? <laughs> all right. Here's my speech. Um, I absolutely believe that the future is women and the future specifically is women of color. And these young women that have been around in Montbello um, have unlimited potential. And if we can get the women you're in the room with right now in power positions in our society um, and be able to choose their own paths, they will always choose righteous paths and paths that will help all of us. And I believe with Mama Bird and specifically with our interviews, we have a way to put money in their pocket. And as you both know, economic empowerment is absolutely everything. With that comes equity with that comes everything else. And so they will use this money for good reasons. They will not abuse it. And we have what I feel is a scalable enterprise in which we can do as many of these interviews as possible, which is literally good for the world because these are people that will be passing that we won't be able to do this ever again. So I believe we have a product that's absolutely priceless. I believe we have people who would thrive in this situation. And so what we really want to do in the future is get as much exposure as we can so we can do as many of these interviews as we can and if we make this work synonymous with young women of color um, and empowerment then that can't be taken away so that'll be something that will be forever and then we can keep doing this again and again and again um, for mama bird it's really a, a slingshot it's not a forever thing i want these women to pursue their own passions in their life to grow their own communities um, and outside of this program, but they're kind of the first class and then they're mentors to the next classes and the next and the next and the next. Um, so what you are gonna hear about is something that I think is remarkable. These women are remarkable. And as you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? I can name hundreds of amazing young women that I've interacted with and there's you know bill, mil, billions, literally billions in the world. I think this could be something that could be global. So that's, I know, Lauren, you're a big thinker. I listened to your podcast and those mountains you talked about. And, what and was I'm that shooting for those podcast? Mountains too. What podcast did you listen one to? Of your, one of your board members. One of your board members had you. Um, oh, my gosh. That was a long time ago. Okay. Yes. Well, <laughs> right. you're Probably still Cammie doing Gilder. good work. <laughs> huh? Probably Cammie Gilder. Cammie. Yeah, it was Cammie. Yeah, it was it a while was good. ago. Worth, worth okay. the listen. Um, and, and, and I really want to, again, empower by getting out of the way. So my goal All is right. for them to See be All right, see you, love you. So Gotta bye. go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Y'all begin however you would like. I can start by introducing myself. So my name's Ariana Proctor. I'm currently at CU Boulder, and I'm studying journalism and media production with a minor in leadership studies. And so in my short life, I've kind of overcome a lot that has led me to be where I am today. And so I've kind of like, I'm proud of like the hard work I've put in to be in a position to be in college. And um, I wanna thank you for taking your time out to meet with us because it means a lot. We know you're busy and we really value your time. And so, yeah, like Clark said, we've all read and listened about you and think you're really amazing. And so um, we just wanna like talk to you a little bit about Mama Bird and how we're all about women empowerment. And so I'm a natural introvert myself, but this has been pulling me out of my comfort zone a lot. And so I'm proud of that aspect of it. And um, yeah, we're all about wanting to really economically empower and open doors for young women. Um, this company was founded by Dr. Clark and us as former students and we're working on becoming like equally equity owned. And so we're gonna be woman owned, um, black owned, Latina owned, indigenous owned, Muslim and African woman owned. And so we're really trying to work to capitalize on that as much as we can. And so um, we conduct a lot of legacy interviews on Zoom. And so Janine is our lead interviewer. And so I can kind of pass it on to her for her to introduce herself. Okay, thank you very much. That's fantastic. When I finally went back to school, my degrees in communications ultimately, and it has, um, it has served me well, but to be a journalist in these times with integrity is so important in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Janine. Hello, I'm Janine. Hi. You all <laughs> say Mama Bird, so I don't know. Many of you say Mama oh, Bird, so I'm not sure. I noticed that. I uh, yeah. changed that. I should really go on that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I am the lead in, um, interviewer. Um, when I started back with uh, Proctor, Ariana, and um, Clark, Carla's, and well, everybody in general. Um, 
I myself am also very introverted and um, uh, when they brought me on, I was dealing with a lot of personal traumas, like healing from personal traumas and also had been recently diagnosed with ADHD. And I had also shortly after found out that I was having my second baby girl. So a lot, a lot. came out. A lot. A lot. And through this year, with um, the support of, well, the amazing women that I have like next to me and the support of us, like, I feel like I've really matured a lot through personal struggles and traumas. And um, myself also dropped out of college due to traumatic events, uh, being a car accident and then unhealed trauma from my childhood. And so um, how that's shaped me now is, I mean, I'm honestly, I feel much sure of myself in what direction I'm going into. Um, I am a military spouse, yeah. um, <laughs> strong, proud mother, you know, indigenous, um, learning more about my heritage as, as I get older. Um, and shoot, when I, I always say like, when I get older, what I want to do is, um, I've always had this dream of becoming a therapist um, and helping people. And so my goal is to someday move back to Mont Ballo and build a community center there so that um, mental health access is, well, easier to access to that community, to um, my parents and to all the clubbers there when we get back. When we get back. But, um, that's my main goal. And so I feel like Mama Bird is kind of helping me to skyrocket to that goal. Um, I'm learning from amazing women. And um, well, to talk a little bit about the interviews themselves, um, my dad passed away when I was about 15 years old. And um, well, when Clark kind of brought the idea of interview, like legacy interviews, like I immediately saw the importance of the legacy interview because when I was a kid, I didn't think of asking these important questions to my dad about, you know, his life and what advice he'd like to give. And I mean, of course, he's only 45, but that's time that I won't get back, you know? I do and, know. My father died when I was 17. I do know. Um, I know exactly what you mean. I, I listened to your to the podcast as well. And I, I remember you mentioning that and how that kind of shaped I mean like trauma at such a young age losing somebody so important and that shapes your world yeah. you know? um, and so I immediately saw the importance and I kind of just dove in head first <laughs> and then shortly after I interviewed a woman named Veronica my mentor well one of well one of my many mentors in high school um and she, she was the office lady <laughs> <laughs> she was sadly diagnosed with um, stage four cancer in 2000. Mm, I'm sorry. And um, well, I had the privilege and the honor of interviewing her. And she was talking about her daughters and giving them advice and talking about her life. It was honestly a beautiful experience. I and mean, I personally learned so much. Um, but then she, uh, well, she recently passed like a couple months ago. And so, I mean, that, that kind of took me and took mom as a whole to our core, you know, like if we weren't doing the work that we were doing, like her daughters wouldn't have that, that legacy of their mom, you know, in that way, you know, they'd have pictures and whatnot and memories, but an interview is so concrete to feel. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, that, that 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 still brings up a little bit of tears. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I always say? I'm a crier. Hold on, I need to turn on more light. Um, I'm a crier. I might cry in this conversation, but tears always are an indicator to me that you've touched a deep truth. It's not weakness. It's not, it just means that that truth for you is very deep and very tender. So thank you for for honoring me with that truth. With the work that I do, I, I believe that 
vulnerability is very important in building relationships and um, well, just building connection in general. I think people really dig. Yeah. I mean, with the ADHD, I really have no filter anyway. <laughs> um, I think people really appreciate that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But thank you for accepting my vulnerability. Um, on, on a bit of a lighter note, uh, some of my favorite interviews to do. Here, baby. Go draw. I'm so sorry. Um, are a couple of interviews. I mean, you catch the banter of um, like an old married couple. And it's really entertaining, you know? <laughs> um, hey. She's being a bit honorary right now. So she, I mean, she's baby. So she's that's fine. Okay. That she's, yeah. <laughs> she's fine. You want to see a private <laughs> conversation? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, we see you. We see you, pretty girl. We do. <laughs> Hi, Sophia. How are you? Hi. Can you wave back? Can you wave? Yeah. Okay. All right. We're here. Mama's there. Keep going. Oh, but I mean, also be another beautiful experience, you know, seeing these, seeing like the couple's interviews and then passing knowledge down to, you know, their grandkids and their kids and just having that concrete like legacy that, that pretty much capturing their essence, you know, as as a lot of our bios say, we capture, that's what we do. We're, we're doing the work of capturing essence, you know? Um, you catch laughter and tears and so much wonderful advice. You know, I've learned so much. Um, and that goes on for generations, you know, these videos go the way. And I mean, I found that in this, I'm, I'm putting myself to be a therapist in a way because these, these interviews are therapeutic you know, because we're having really, really deep conversations and talking about things that, you know, you don't really talk about on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis with, you know, random people. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, well, so much good is going to come from Mama Bird. I, I've already wow. been so much and I have my peers and I'm excited to see what this new year brings. So thank you for your time. Thank you for being a part of this. Um, oh, you're very welcome. And um, I, we will figure out a way, I'll just let you know this now, um, to do some sort of an interview or something. I'm thinking maybe around Mother's Day, um, you know, with me or family members. And, and then I'll share with other friends the, the work that you're doing. So just know, so know that. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'll do something. But if you interview me, you need to allow for a lot of time. A lot of time. I know. <laughs> oh, dear. I would, love, I would love to interview you. <laughs> um, well, well I'll, let, I'll let Carla talk. I, I have a habit of rambling on my okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. That wasn't <laughs> rambling. Thank you. All right, Carla. Now, Hi, my the, name is. Where's the baby? So I actually have two. I have one right over here oh, <laughs> sitting okay. on the desk. And then I have one uh, playing with crayons. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And their names? So my son's name is Miguel. And then my daughter's name is Navid. Oh, terrific. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So my name is Carla Muñoz. I'm 24 years old. I actually have three children. The other one's downstairs. He's nine. And his name's Raul. Um, I actually had him when I was 15 years old in high school, and that was with a very abusive, toxic relationship, um, and it just probably kept me there for a good six years, unfortunately. Um, I didn't grow up, you know, having much. My parents were both abusive, mom and dad. Uh, they do come from, so I, I, I am proud to be Honduran because they are undocumented Honduran. Well, now my mother is documented, so thank God, but... Um, they came here undocumented from Honduras. And that was a crazy journey for them. Just, you know, going through immigration sure. took them forever to get, you know, documented and stuff. 
I do have uh, seven siblings, so it's seven of us. <laughs> um, and one is is the age of my daughter, so <laughs> they're pretty close to me. And then, um, you know, going back to high school and college, like uh, Where did my you dream go to high school. So I went to Hinkley High School. Okay. Yeah. And um, I was I was going to go right to college after that. Unfortunately, my son's grandmother and his father's side was diagnosed with stage four colon and liver cancer. Mm. So I postponed that to go ahead and take care of her. And that's when she would tell me, Carla, you know, you should just pursue your dream of becoming a nurse, like go back to school. And I'm like, no, I have to take care of you. Um, so I did that until she passed away in 2017. And for some reason, I don't know what it was. I was pregnant with my son and I'm like, no, I have, I have to go back to school for nursing. Like this is, this has always been a dream. This is what I'm going to do. And then I told myself, I'm going to become a registered nurse in oncology. That's, that's what I want to do. Even though it's very emotional, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go to a community college of Denver and I'm going to start my spring semester, which is going to be my second semester there, uh, this year. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I do talk a little bit about, uh, to most women who I, I like to encounter, just because I know I went through a very toxic, traumatic uh, past with my son's father. I like to talk about the fact that um, I, I was 19, I believe, 18 or 19 when I had gotten pregnant again, but it wasn't a voluntary pregnancy and it wasn't me um, wanting to be intimate with this person. It, it was just basically, you know, sexual assault. I was and, gonna ask, are you being coy about okay name it yeah <laughs> yeah and it, it just sucked you know at first I didn't want to accept it until I went to therapy and they're like no Carla you can say that's right it's okay especially if you were not um you weren't consentful of it so I ended up getting pregnant and I remember like he was just furious because he wanted to do whatever he wanted to do in his life and um I remember I was to I it was so sad because I remember that night I had just gotten home off of work and he was, I don't know if he might have drank the few hours before or whatnot, but he was just yelling and screaming at me, you know, slurs and everything. And I remember that he just started beating on me. He just started beating on me. And I remember, like I've told the girls, like I literally closed my eyes because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get out that, especially the room where I was in, there was literally no way out. He had took my keys, my phone, everything, anything that I can even, you know, try to escape in some type of way. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I told the Lord, I'm like, you know what, if this is how you're going to take me out, this is how you're going to take me out. And people will find out who this person is. I'm like, but please keep me here. Um, sorry, please keep me here with my child because I don't want to leave uh you know this world with such a monster because if he destroyed me and belittled me and tore every single piece of who I was I don't want him to do the same for my son mm -hmm. and that's when I was determined to leave the relationship and I remember I I packed up my stuff I remember I was scared and I just grabbed all my stuff put it in the car made sure he was at work didn't come back and went to my aunt's house and my aunt's like, you know, just stay here. If he comes like your uncle's right there to protect you. And it's crazy how someone can make you feel like nobody is there to help you. Like you have no help. Like you can't contact just a, a simple family member. So it, it threw me off. And I was just like, wow, it's crazy how I allowed somebody to push me to that level to believe that my family wasn't there for me. So once I did that, I felt very empowered, but at the same time destroyed because my son, unfortunately, got to see a lot of the abuse and I didn't want him to grow up to think that that was normal. And unfortunately, I feel like he's seen too much to where now he's very overprotective over me, even when it comes to my own husband and my husband's like the complete opposite. Poor man. I feel like <laughs> it gave him, you know, this, this difficult time trying to, trying to get to know me and, and just let allow me to be vulnerable with him but i'm glad that you had that patience to be able to say hey i accept you for who you are i accept your past and let's move forward and make sure that you don't think that every human being is this way right uh, trust is hard you know very um yeah trust is hard yeah so i, I understand thank you
Of what is, course. Um, so do all of you, just real quick, so I'm clear, do you all do interviews? So we all do, and we all do have a certain, um, basically job to cover. So for me, it would be the business side of it. Um, for our interviews, which are $333, 200 of that goes to the interviewer, which honestly, in the Montbello community, $200 to us, that's, that's like a lot, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> we sit here and we're like, wow, like within just one interview, we can make so much. And it helps out so much just because I know I made many of the ladies who are here struggle when it comes to, uh, financial stability do, especially with this whole pandemic, it's really messed us all up. And then I know some of us, uh, many of us help out our, our, parents because they are unfortunately able to even sustain their financial stability so that really helps out the community because i feel like most of the young empowering women that we have in that community um will will start to notice and see like hey you know what like if these ladies can do it we can too and hopefully it starts to give our our young women of color some type of stability so that they at least know like hey you know what Maybe my part-time job is, isn't enough, but at least I have these interviews set up and it'll give me some financial stability to still be able to pay for what I need to pay for in order for me to still be able to, you know, for example, live in this apartment or be able to go get some groceries or help out my parents with whatever, you know, bills that they need. I don't know. Thank you, Carla. Thank you very much. I want to make sure I hear from each of you uh, as well. And We'll probably go until five. Originally, we were saying a half an hour, but that's not going to work. We get we we're going to need an hour. That's real clear, um, <laughs> at least. So let's shoot for five, and um, and then I want to make sure I understand how Mama Bird works um, as well. So tell me, as each of you come on, tell me your role as well. Carla just said she does business, you know, interview. Tell me that. So who goes next? I go next. Um, okay. My name is you, Sarah. I am a freshman in college, but credit wise, I'm a junior and I should be able to graduate next year. So I graduated high school last year, but I'm graduating college next Where year. Where did you go to high school? I went to high school at Noel Community Art School. Some people just call it Mount Bello High School. Um, okay. Yeah. I, am, I also have seven siblings. Um, I came to America when I was six years old. My parents are from Somalia, but we took refuge in Kenya. So I was born in a refugee camp. Um, I don't remember like most of it, but my parents talk about how like horrifying it was and how mal mal malnutrition we were and how they had to like go begging for sugar and stuff and, like, um, and all of that. So for a long time, I felt like I owe this duty to them and everyone around me. But all the time I've been told like, you're a girl, like at the end of the day, you're gonna get married, have kids and your husband, like you'll be your husband's problem. So for the longest time, I kind of, sorry for the vacuum background. Uh, for the longest time, I kind of didn't really try until I got into middle school. And then I realized I choose me and it doesn't matter if people think I'm a woman and I can't do it. So I always wanted to show my parents that I could be the son that they never had. Um, but at the end of the day, the attention always went to my brothers. So we constantly have police officers at our house. Um, my there were moments where we thought my brothers were dead. And I would stay up each night during like eighth grade, make um, my parents searching for my brothers and I'll be taking care of my, my little siblings. So I acted like a second mother my whole life and I continue to. Um, right now I'm on break, but I wake up early to make sure my siblings are on Zoom classes and that that's ready for them. So yeah, there's been a lot going on in my life. But with Mama Bird, I've learned to kind of take power of it. Um, I've never met Muslim women for like in college or in politics or any representation. But with Mama Bird, we do mentorship interviews, which aren't paid interviews. And with those interviews, you talk to someone with a similar background as you, whether that's in uh, the career field you want to go to or simply uh, where they come from. And I've met a couple women and they're so amazing. And with that, I've got gained hope. Um, I'm the first in my family to go to college and meeting other Muslim women who've gone to college and who have to face the same things as me and constantly being told like, you're gonna get married or this and that has really helped because I'm like, that's not all there's to life. There's like way much more and I don't need a husband or a man to like fulfill my life that I can still do it even if 
my parents don't think so, or people just see, oh, she's just another Muslim girl who's gonna get married. Um, but yeah, with that, I've also, we have an internship program. And with this internship program, I've been able to be a mentor and which is kind of new to me, but also I'm really excited for it. I was in an interview for like four hours with one of the interns and I was able to talk to them. And Where's your internship? Oh, uh, Mama Bird has an internship program. I've done internships when I was in high school or at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science because I wanted to be a biologist. Um, but now I'm majoring in anthropology with a minor in human development. I'm not clear on what I want to do with my life. I just know I really want to help people, um, specifically immigrants and families and young women. So I'm trying to like take use of the different programs my school has uh, so that way I can, you know, connect to much as well as I can and help people along the way. Um, but yeah, Mama Bird has an internship program uh, with Northeast Orby College. So we have high schoolers. I think we have five interns total. Uh, one of them is here with us, her name's Lorena. Um, and they're really amazing and they help us every way they can. Uh, in Mama Bird, I do interviews. Um, I also help out with like anything else that needs to be done, um, whether that's making phone calls, I'm sending out emails. I also do a lot of mentor mentorship interviews um, to help you know promote that side of our business. Um, and that's what I mostly do for Mama Bird. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yasira. Next. Okay, um, my name is Ali Martinez. I am, I just turned 20 in August. Um, I live on my own now, um, kind of forced on me last year. Uh, um, I'll go into background about that. Uh, my family wasn't necessarily the best. My parents had a semi-abusive relationship. My dad often took his, his anger out and stuff on the family. Mm -hmm. um, and he had some harsh ideals about women that he got from religion. Um, and so he would take that out on me. Didn't um, want to like be treated the way he was treating me anymore. And um, so I, we kind of got in an argument. He kind of laid his hands on me and I was kind of rushed out of the house. So I live on my own in the midst of a pandemic and it's really not easy, but because of these awesome ladies here at Mama Bird and Clark, uh, I've been able to, you know, help sustain myself and uh, my boyfriend and, well, they're my children, but they're not real ch children, they're pets, my dog and my three cats. Um, and we try to sustain them. Um, it's been really hard, financial struggles, because my family wasn't all that great with their finances. Um, so neither necessarily am I, like I'm not given uh, a good standing point like other people are with that have more money. Um, so I'm kind of building off that and that's, I really wanna save and, and do better with my finances. Um, but for Mama Bird, I do social media. Uh, so if you see anything on Facebook, if um, you see a post and we tag you or anything like that. That's I'm not on, I'm not <laughs> on social media. I did notice that. I attempted to yeah. <laughs> today, so. <laughs> but I'm sure, um, I'm sure yours is great. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have a, an awesome picture of you that I got from uh, your Women's Foundation of Colorado uh, website. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I do. Um, I'm working on starting to editing the interviews that they do. Um, and yeah, I kind of want to branch out into this field more, maybe with other companies. So I'm kind of learning as I'm doing. And it's really great so far. I'm getting a lot of skills and I'm re really proud of what I've been able to do so far. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do you understand that in social media, do you understand the back end of the social media of like why people open or why they look or rates yeah. that drop you? Do you know I'm that? I'm figuring that out a little bit. Um, okay. Some of it I know, some of it I don't. Um, uh -huh. And I know that when you make a page on like Facebook, for example, it gives you that background information. So it'll tell you if you're having people look at a certain post more or not. And I'm really trying to pick up on that. So uh, yeah, like I said before, it's a bit of a learning process and I'm learning right. to go, but I definitely have more knowledge than I had previously. I'm gonna make a you. recommendation based on what Lauren said. Um, I literally just saw it this week. It's called The Social Dilemma, it's on Netflix. 
if yeah. you, it's, it's a deep dive into the evolution of social media. And I think that if that's your area of interest, I think that that would be a really great documentary for you to, to watch. So um, yeah, it was, it, my eyes popped out of my head. It, it's really good. It's really good. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, I just wrote that down. So <laughs> I'll give that a watch later. Thank you so okay, much. Back to fly on the wall status. Uh, uh, thank you so much, thank Lorena. You. Okay. Wow. I'll, try. <laughs> I'll try to get um, through my introduction, introduction a little bit faster for the sake of time. But hi, my name is Lorena Medina. Um, I'm 17 years old. I am a senior year in high school, and I'm also the Where? lead oh, at N Northeast Early College. Okay. So a part of the internship program here at Mama Bird. Okay. So, um, oh, and I was going to say that um, I'm the lead intern here at Mama Bird. So I'm kind of like in front of like all the interns, so like managing them as well and working with them. Um, also, my mentor is Carla, so I work alongside her as well. And yeah. So to begin, um, I, after high school, I would like to pursue a career in business and more specifically, right now I'm interested in accounting. Um, and I'm currently working in the, as an accounting apprentice at Home Advisor. Um, it's a company that connects homeowners and service professionals for any renovations or home projects. And oh, you're kidding. <laughs> no, I'm really... Yeah. <laughs> we might uh, have to talk after. <laughs> I have a thing that needs to be done. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, I really, oh, this program extends for like three years. Um, I'm currently in my second year. So I have the great opportunity of having my first year of college um, being paid for for the program. And so, yeah, um, I have really enjoyed all the things that I've learned so far in accounting. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean I want to work as an accountant like my whole life. Um, I don't know if you know, but I'm an introvert. And although I am a very introverted person, I would really love to, I really like to work for people and with people. And I want to give back. And sorry if I'm like kind of cutting off, but I'm reading off my notes. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I want to give back. Right now, I'm working really actively with my church. Um, it's called Ministerios Casa de Unción. It's a small church, but um, I'm working with a few projects. The two that stand out or that we've been really diving deep into is the annual toy drive and um, the food bank. Um, for the toy drive, we um, raise funds for um, so we can buy toys and make a holiday meal for um, low-income families in Mexico. Um, we just did that the last December last year, a month ago. And for the food bank, we go and collect um, food from food distributors that donate us food. And uh, we act as a little mini extension from that. So in our church, we give back to communities in the Thornton slash Denver com area communities. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I have seen um, during this time, so many families that are blessed because of this and especially during like the coronavirus pandemic and these hard times. So yeah, um, now that I am with Mama Bird, I know for a fact that I will be like going to impact more lives than I have ever imagined. And I really, that's really important to me because I'm such a giving person. I'm so caring and I really want to just give back my all. Um, I'm grateful um, because for this little amount of time I've been at Mama Bird, I've learned a lot about myself and of what I truly want out of life and what I want it to look like for me. Um, I've, um, it's helped me to realize that I can be myself, that I can have my own opinions and I can speak out because for so long I've not had my own voice in fear of offending others or others' views, but I don't want to live like that anymore. I am just, and my, my opinions matter just as much as everyone else's. And I am grateful for that. Um, also, I can't wait to be a part of the ongoing growth of Mama Bird and Mama Bird interviews and all of the extensions of that. So I'm excited. And um, just to wrap it up, I've always known that I've wanted to work with people, um, but I never really knew where to start. Like, I mean, I've been working with my church and everything, but just like a career, I guess. Um, 
And so I'm a, I'm a bird. I think it's the start of like my career and helping others and just starting to grow and yeah, to grow. Um, but it's also like the start of um, women empowerment in communities such as Montbello, because I, I rarely see it like in communities that are so close to me. So I'm really excited to be part of that as well. And also being a part, uh, being the daughter of Mexican immigrants, um, I was raised in a very family oriented um, household and very helping, like helping hands. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been taught many things throughout my life, but one that I will always um, keep into my heart is that whenever you're going to give, give only the very best of yourself, the only best, not the leftovers, not the scraps, the very best. Mm -hmm. And that's what I plan to do for my life. So Good for yeah, you. that's me. <laughs> uh, I'm so, everybody just snap, do whatever, you know, celebrate yourselves, celebrate yourselves. Absolutely, yes, yes. Um, uh, thank you so very, very much. This was exactly what I hoped. And you went, um, uh, you were more trusting of me than I had even uh, expected. So I, I thank you. I am grateful for your, for your time. It strikes me that so many of you introduced yourselves as introverts, almost like you were apologizing, like, oh, I'm an introvert, you know. Um, and I am a flaming extrovert, um, just heads up, flaming extrovert. But the only difference is that if you were to envision a fake fur coat, um, not a real fur coat, um, I wear my fur on the outside and y'all wear your fur on the inside. So um, just, just think of, the, of it that way. Being an introvert means that you also you draw your energy in a different kind of way. And if I didn't have introverts around me, um, people around me who weren't more quiet to keep me grounded, I would spin out into the ozone someplace. So um, I really appreciate those listening skills. How may I be of service to you? So for us, what we want to go ahead and do is we want to reach as many people as we can with Mama Bird. One, because obviously this is a, a great keepsake for family members, but two, because we want to go ahead and and, and let our community know that we're not going to be stuck where, you know, they usually keep Montbello. They have this negative connotation around our, our community. And we have so many wonderful women of color that all they need is that positive boost to be able to get up to whatever they want to accomplish. And we just want to be able to reach as many of these women as we can and say, hey, you know what? Um, you know, even though 200, 200 may not mean a lot to somebody, but 200 may mean more oh, to somebody doing this, do, doing this interview and having this as a part-time job is going to help you reach your goals. It's going to help you. Hey, for example, FAFSA didn't cover all, all your tuition. These 200 bucks can go towards that. I want them to know that just because we're seen in a negative way, that doesn't mean that we can't get our community out of there. In Montbello, are you connected to, um, you know, environmental learning for kids like that network? Or have you ever heard the name of Angel Fowler? Her husband is a pastor for a church, but there's like this Montbello Action Committee. I can't remember what Montbello, is it MOC? But there's this whole Montbello organizing. Does this sound at all familiar to you? Any of this? Sorry, it kind of does. I it, It's very familiar just because I know one of my former teachers actually from Montbello, uh, Miss Janet Damon. Uh, okay. Okay. Seems like, she, oh, <laughs> Manushka, you know her? Yes. She's an amazing advocate for Montbello. So I'm pretty sure she's connected with them. Yeah, there's yeah. this, and they are getting, um, you know, they're really developing a strong action plan and network on um, this group. Manu, remind me, Angel Fowler is the person I want to make sure Dan connects to. And she okay. works at Urban Land Conservancy now, I believe. She used to be at the Denver Foundation with me. Um, and the Denver Foundation funds them as well. But we've got to get you all kind of connected. 
my daughter, and she taught when Montbello High School had Denver Center for International Studies, college prep. There was something else, the three schools, and she did Teach for America at Montbello High School, but she got sick. She has lupus, so she only did it for, for a year. So Northeast Denver, that whole, <laughs> yeah, is, is my part of the world, is definitely my part of the world. Um, so we'll think about some of the some of the concentric circles and networks. This is all a learning process for okay. all of us. Um, in fact, like for this, I've never even considered networking or seeing the importance of networking. We'll pull usually... together some contacts okay. um, and some thoughts and some ideas, um, you know, for you in different kinds of ways. I don't know if you've heard, but the Women's Foundation has just opened up a, a fund for women and girls of color. Manu, maybe you can put in the chat. See, I'm so glad you're here. I'm like, yay, Manu. <laughs> She's gotta like run around behind me, picking up all the pieces, Manu. Um, <laughs> um, but the Women and Girls of Color Fund, where we'll be funding organizations statewide that are led by women of color serving women and girls of color. And Renee is the person who's, Carla Renee is the one who's kind of in charge of that, she and Kamisha. So that will also broaden networks for you. I think of potential, you know, mentors and other kinds of relationships. We have this really amazing advisory committee, but you should just take a look at um, added a little bit, uh, the link that Manu just put in to um, get an understanding of how we look at leadership for women and girls of color, some of the feedback that we've gotten and our, our commitment. Um, if, can I make a quick suggestion to you? To, if I understand correctly, um, you ladies are each going to be conducting interviews one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, yourselves, correct, with, with individuals? So something that I've, I've learned from when I was thrust into this kind of broadcasting aspect of, uh, of work with Lauren, with her being such a public figure and what um, I've seen her do, um, which I think is really effective is uh, to be, allow herself to be flexible. So you all did great and um, you were going on from a script and that's necessary. But um, as Lauren is interviewing her subjects, what she does is she allows the direction of the conversation to kind of guide. And if it deviates off of the script a little bit, then that's okay. You know, don't feel like that um, is bad. Just allow the flow of the conversation to kind of take, uh, take you where it needs to go. And so I think that that's a, um, something just to kind of stick in, in the, the, the back of your mind to allow the conversation to sometimes lead you somewhere where you may not have scripted. Yeah, lead with curiosity. Uh, I think is really important. Oftentimes you need to have a set of questions or key uh, thoughts or ideas or uh, things about which you need to learn. And that's great as again, in a framework uh, you know, that you have, but within that framework, uh, allow yourself to be curious to ask people, well, what did that mean? How did that feel? Um, tell me more about that. Um, what did that look like? Uh, if someone says, even the simple things, you'll be amazed. If someone says, oh, in my country for New Year's or in my culture, we eat black eyed peas and collard greens, which is what happens to happen with me. Um, but Manu is Haitian and has a different, What's really interesting is not just to have her say that, but ask her to describe the history and the taste and the familiarity and the feelings that that soup elicits for her. So something that simple as you're doing the interviews of being curious about soup can lead you into um, in an arena that you may not even imagine. They could be happy memories. Someone might even say, I feel sad now when I smell it because it was my grandma's and my grandma died. Um, 
someone could say it brings me joy because of family context, it, who knows? Um, but just be curious. How else uh, um, may I be of service to you? I think another thing that we were like looking into is um, we've been doing work with the Center for Trauma and Resilience to kind oh, of emphasize, yeah, the mental health and or especially around communities of color. And so we wanted to see how you think that like work can open up, open us up for opportunities for grants because we've been offering free therapy, like group therapy and individual therapy for young women. And so like, does that open us up to possibilities of grants and things like that? Well, you know, one of the things, and this is where Dana and I are gonna have to talk a little bit. Um, when you talk about grants, Grants are more of a nonprofit um, resource exchange. And he mentioned to me very quickly that they're talking about being your fiscal agent. I might have to get together with Dan and with Kathy to understand how if your structure is a for-profit uh, structure, what it means to have a fiscal agent and what that relationship is. Because you can't like just double dip um, <laughs> in some ways. But the other thing is that the Women's Foundation does impact investing. And Manu, 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 have, have we closed? Are we asking for applicants now? For the women and girls in the culture? Investing for WIGSI, is that closed? Oh, it might be closed, I'm not sure. So look at our impact investing page and put that in the link too, because even if it doesn't work for this round, but but it does mean that we can support some for-profit entities that have the purpose and the intent of doing um, work that meets our mission and our values. And, and then that becomes an investment instead of a grant. So I got to get a little bit more clarity about what this structure is. But to answer your question about mental health, I am a strong proponent of mental health and behavioral health. The way I first heard about Dan, as a matter of fact, Kathy connected me to um, Mama Bird because I was at the center getting acupuncture in my ears to calm me down. Like, settle down, settle down, girl. Um, so one way to get someone's attention is to put 10 needles in their ears and tell them what you want them to do. So Kathy put 10 needles in my ears and she said, I want you to connect with Mama Bird. I was like, okay. <laughs> um, uh, the reason why I flunked out of college, just real quick, is when I was 16, I was violently sexually assaulted in another country and I was alone. And, um, and I was on crutches and I didn't speak the language, like all the things, I was the perfect target, the perfect target um, for this assault. Six months later, my father and my grandfather died within the same um, week to 10 day period and then a year almost to the date my, of my father's death, my best friend, the first love of my life was killed um, as well. So that was an 18 month period. I tried to continue to go through school. I was embarrassed and ashamed to say that I was having a really hard time. I was having, I knew I was having a hard time, but I, I didn't know how to ask for help. And ultimately, it wasn't until I sort of stopped going to class. And no adult, you're so lucky to have a community. I didn't have a community that I trusted to be vulnerable. Um, so I missed one week of class, then two weeks, then two months. And then, you know, just gradually, they were like, you're out of here. So I literally flunked out of college um, is what happened. And I went back later on, but it took me about seven and a half years to get my BA in communications at CU Denver, downtown, um, was where I ultimately graduated from. But if I, if there had been an adult, a community of trust such as you have, um, if I had known how to ask for help, if there had been a therapy community that understood trauma, I didn't know the word trauma. I didn't know the word depression. Um, 
I didn't have the language to even ask for help. At that time, the college that I was at back east, which is where I'm from, if I had gone to the wellness center, they would have given me birth control, right? It just in the early 1970s, um, no one had the language, no one felt comfortable. And communities of color generally do not feel comfortable talking about um, mental health. And we're afraid of the systems that we think will judge us. Um, you know, the whole context of being crazy or whatever it may be, you know. Um, so ultimately, um, I found a great therapist and um, I went on my healing journey. I continued to do therapy, not necessarily week to week anymore as I did at one time, but I have like little check-ins. Um, I, you know, I call them like tune-ups, like if you're going to change the oil in your car every 3,000 miles, right? Can't you at least spend a little bit of time, <laughs> you know, sort of tuning yourself up and, and cleaning that oil and getting the cobwebs out. So to this day, I continue to do that. So Ariana, that's a long answer to say that I think that, um, that CTR is a wonderful place. I love the holistic, whether it is, whether it's the needles in your ears, whether it's talk therapy, you know, they have so many tools and options um, in an understanding of the context, in particular of people of color, um, that, that that healing and that investment in our mind, the same way we would invest in our bodies or in our clothes or in our car or whatever else it might be, I personally think is invaluable. So right on. That partnership is invaluable. I don't understand the structure right now that y'all are talking about, but offering and exposing therapy to our communities as a gift, <laughs> it's a gift. It's not a weakness, it's a gift, uh, is something really, extraordinary. I also believe, although they don't call themselves therapy, but if you're going to think about 12-step groups, right, simply being in a support environment where you can tell your truth and nobody will judge you in a 12-step group, they'll just say like, thanks for sharing. They don't offer, but yet you might end up with a, you know, a sponsor, but just to say it, um, in and of itself to put your truth out there in a safe and trusting environment. But if you can have someone really guide you toward the healing journey, um, it makes a huge difference. I might not have flunked out of that if I had found that, if I'd had that, if I had had women around me like you, um, I just, I didn't have that. I, I know that in, in communities of color, um, I mean, even in my own family, the way that when you don't have the access or the um, knowledge or the comfort to seek help, we tend to, you know, self-medicate. Self-medicate. Because my dad was schizophrenic. Come okay, you know, well, late thing. adolescence, um, onset of um, psychosis um, and is usually late uh, adolescence and early 20s. Yeah, um, yeah. So. As I've learned now that I'm an adult and then, um, but the self-medicating that I see in my own family is for horrific in, in our community in general, that really <clears throat> pushes me to really pursue. Yeah, it's, how um, it's an issue. And during the pandemic, um, you know, people joke about the day drinking or, you know, whatever. Um, and and usually when people joke about some things, it's usually a little bit more serious than they're laughing about, um, you know, that's going on. And, and that's, you know, the stress, the isolation, you know, the self-medication that's coming up. And it's hard to get so much of substance abuse healing depends upon having community and relationship and support systems. And, and it's really hard um, now for folks 
Um, yeah. And so that medication is, um, that self-medication becomes more difficult. Sure. Uh, the question becomes the why. Why are you using, what are you medicating? What's the feeling? What's the fear? Um, what's the circumstance? And yeah, so it really does become the why, but the rate of substance abuse under the pandemic, the accidental alcoholics or whatever um, is, is a significant issue because mental health uh, as a result of the stress is also um, uh, fraying in some ways. And then if you add on top of that, George Floyd, like yesterday, <laughs> like yesterday, um, you know, uh, it, it becomes really tough. So we can't judge those who, it's not about judging those who may be self-medicating. It's how do we provide the alternatives and how do we have, provide them with the support and the conversations and the self-reflection and understanding that they need so that they don't have to rely upon that numbing mechanism. And I way. feel like the trauma and resiliency, well, our partnering with them it came at the perfect time. I mean, of course, oh. we, when we um, started reaching out to people to come and join, like a lot of people were still very wary of, like, I don't, I don't think this is for me. I don't have the time, you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, when really it's an, an investment in themselves, you know, and on top of that, the grant money that goes towards these individuals, you know, um, and the mentor mentorship, you know, but it's it's like mental health is still so stigmatized and, um, but for the people who are a part of Mama Bird Mentors and the people who are um, therapy and the help that we need during this time with the, with, the Trauma and Resiliency Center. I think the next time that, like the next group will be bigger, you know? Yeah, and exactly. You know, it's so interesting. We talk about mental health or behavioral health as though it's a thing out here, right? And the fact of the matter is, is that we have mental health all the time, just like we have physical health all the time. It's simply, um, our brains are simply an aspect of our bodies. That's all it is. So, you know, whether I, if I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling happy and grounded or whatever else, that's still a reflection of my mental health. It doesn't have to be, we, we always speak of mental health as though it's a negative, that something's going wrong. Mental health is about um, simply being whole in all aspects of the functions of our body. And sometimes it's been, a lot of times it's fantastic, it's great. And sometimes it's not, and it needs help. And in these times, it needs a little more help. Let's be honest, it needs a little bit more. Um, if you're living on an economic edge, multiple children, kids at home, technology, food insecure, like all the things that the Women's Foundation cares about, I am sitting in a very privileged space right now in my house, right? And when I get off, I'll go downstairs without hesitation and either pick up the phone and order something to eat or maybe I'll scramble an egg. <laughs> I don't cook. Um, so, but I know I won't be hungry. I know I'll wake up in my bed the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. And um, the thing with mental with you know having that conversation it's it's there's layers you know it's it's the poverty that people are coming from that women are coming from it's the trauma it's the it's toxic the, stress yeah toxic stress um and there's just so many different things that like underneath this umbrella of health you know and making sure that people are are at their whole, you know, at in in not like feeling feeling scared or worried about where their next meal is coming from or how they're going to make make rent. And um, with Mama Bird, like, of course, we're not making 
enough money right now at the time to um, like, like for example, with Ali, he is struggling with making rent. And um, I mean, even with my right now, we're not making enough to help her completely, but we, we are making enough to help. But at some point we will be at to make very dramatic differences, economic difference in people's lives. And I mean, that just, that starts with interviews and um, getting the word out there, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and so- that I can help you do. That but, I can help you do. Um, and we can start thinking about um, starting with me uh, doing an interview. And then once I have an experience, Again, just like I needed to see, and then I can say to other people like, oh, people that I know care about women, care about women and girls. Then I can say, um, yeah, this is what I did and this is what I loved and this is what it felt like and, and all of that. So I will absolutely do that. I talk all the time anyway, so I might as well talk about y'all, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, after, after you fell in love with our process and with our interviewers and you know um I'm sure you already see the importance of like capturing somebody's legacy you know and, and yeah uh, you know once once you have something tangible to show your your friends and your family like yeah I did this like you guys should do this too yeah um, I think exactly exactly if it would be okay if um you brought a group of women together who are you know, leaders, mentors, people that we can learn from, and also not just, you know, interview, but learn from. Yeah, um, well, I can think of folks who might be able to do both, you know, to be honest. Um, and uh, Manu, 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 remind me, um, the Latino Leadership Institute and the African American Leadership Institute uh, you know Ryan, Ryan Ross's program as one, and then the other one being the Latino leadership. And then Aaron Yashimura has um, started another program. I just need you to make notes so I can follow this up. Um, she started an Asian leadership group when she was running Dragon Boat Festival. Problem is that I think about a lot of stuff real fast and then I forget. So be really glad that Manu was here because otherwise I'd be like, what did I say? <laughs> I don't remember. Well, I know you all have kids and you know things that you need to do. This is a beginning of a conversation for us. Uh, I am glad to get to know you um, and to spend time with you. I do want to dispel, and I hope I have a little bit, you know, Dan's whole thing about like, oh, Lauren Castillo, like take that with a grain of salt. Take my resume with a grain of salt. It's just life. It's just life. And I've been lucky in a number of ways to have found a career um, that, that is my natural space. I've been very lucky for that. But I got fired from my first job after I flunked out again. Like life happened. It's what you do with those experiences and the community that you build. My daughter has lupus. Um, uh, I am gonna give you, who was it? Who's the artist? Somebody said something about School of Art. Somebody said something about art. Who was it? Majority of us attended no community art school. Okay, um, Manu, Manu, Manu. Um, wait, I have an idea. I'm gonna put in the chat, but I'm going to share this screen real quick. Um, can you see this? Jordan Cast, can you see that? Okay. Um, you might get a kick out of going to her website um and reading some of the interviews she's really hard you're going to be like we want to interview her we want to interview her we want to interview her jordy is really 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 hard to get 
but maybe we can do something as a family. I don't know. So I'm not making, but if, if art is a passion of yours, um, Jordan graduated East High School. She's the one who did TFA um, at, at Montbello. And there are all kinds of videos and all kinds of stuff about her on this website. And she painted the cover of Vogue. And you want to hear something kind of funny? So this is the entertainment. This is the entertainment phase. Um, let me find, um, wait, maybe, maybe it was there. Let's see. Let me go down. Um, but I'm going to ask you if you knew that you were going to be, uh, if you knew that you were going to be photographed by Vogue, what would you do? What would you do to, to prepare or whatever? Just call it out. What would you do? You knew the photographer who painted, who photographed the cover, uh, Beyonce for the cover of Vogue was going to come and see you. What would you do? Shout it out, guys. Come on. Come on. I'd probably educate myself about the photographer for sure. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, keep going. Okay, keep going. Um, I probably prepare with poses, outfits, self care, make myself look good. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's Pretty usually the first answer. I gotta say, the researching the photographer is not usually the first answer, but that's interesting. But that that self care is usually the first answer um, that comes up. Some folks will just say, some young young women will just say, like straight up, I'll go and get my nails did, right? Like like that's. Um, first black photographer who photographed my, he told her he was going to come to her, her apartment and photograph her. And she opens up the door and he looks at her and says, um, do you need like a little bit of time to get ready? At which point she says, not unless you want me to put my shoes on. Hold on, I gotta, oh wait, maybe if I do it small. She plopped herself on the floor, no makeup. Wearing a pair of jeans she's probably had since high school or, or they're my mom jeans, I'm not quite sure. Um, and she's wearing, the photograph isn't showing here, but you know, these are like, oh yeah, like the athletic socks, the striped athletic socks. She never did put her shoes on. Um, the message that I'm giving to you that you are already reflecting is that your success will ultimately depend upon your simply being true to who you are and following those passions, those gifts, those joys um, that you know to be true for you with integrity and honoring your body and your mind, your community, your family, whatever that may be for you. But um, my kid is this, there she is in Vogue. And they did a, there's another story about her. They did a six page layout about her um, in a previous issue of Vogue, not, not this one. And, um, and that was when they actually took the photographs. Um, so, that's the moral of the story, but you can look up Jordan. Um, her journey has also been um, complicated um, because of the lupus and um, she didn't go to art school um, until she got her MFA. So just read some stuff about her. Um, she went from painting in her bedroom, um, painting her students in Teach for America, making stuff, to um, to then going on and getting her master's in fine arts and had to learn, was told that 
she'd never make it. The other students told her she'd never make it. She'd never built a canvas. She hadn't learned the techniques. She hadn't done any of those things. And like you, she didn't accept no as an answer. And it was hard and it was hard. So there you have it. Thank you so much. Thank you. So You're much. welcome, Miss Lorena Medina. <laughs> Thank you. That's actually really inspiring. I have no span. I have no, I can't, I can't, but you say your name so beautifully. Each one of you. Ooh, wait. No, I won't do that. It'll take too long. Um, saying your name is one of the most important things that you can do is to say your name, okay? And if you can, get other people to say it the way you want them to say it. But regardless, um, you say it and you claim whatever ancestor or story or whatever it is that's a part of that name. Um, and if you name yourself, whatever it is, but you say your name. All right, gotta go. I think I'm down to scrambling <laughs> eggs tonight, Manu. <laughs> Maybe a can of soup. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Love you guys. Love you too. Bye. Bye.